going to start by making the dough. We have bread flour. You could also use all-purpose flour. Um, but when I make rolls, I usually use bread flour. And then I like to use a little bit of whole wheat pastry flour. I just think it adds a better texture, but uh, you don't need to add that either if you don't want to. And then whenever I use whole wheat flour, I like to use a little uh, wheat gluten. It's uh, They sell it oftentimes with um, food storage stuff around here, but it, it really helps you get a better rise. So I'll add that when I'm using wheat flour, whole wheat. Uh, and then I don't know if you guys have tried the new Red Star Platinum Yeast, um, but if you're afraid of um, doing breads, it's really a foolproof yeast. So just with yeast, um, you want to make sure it's fresh, especially um, when you're using an instant yeast and you uh, just mix it in with your flours. So be sure and check the date on that if, you, if you're unsure. All right, so we've got the, the flours that we're just going to go ahead and we put it on my KitchenAid and mix it. So we don't even have to mix it with um, water or sugar when you're using instant yeast. And if you're making it in, in your mixer, you can just go ahead and add it right with your flours. And, and I really like to do it that way because it, it's so much faster. So let's put it on my mixer. And, and then just that quick, you just um, want to mix in the yeast. Okay, so now um, when you when you use an instant yeast, you can heat up your your liquids a little bit hotter. So I just do it in the microwave because I think it's so much faster. So I'll just put it in the microwave. It'll probably take oh probably take only a minute, minute and a half. Um, while we're doing that, I'll just talk a little bit about measuring flour. So it's really important when you're when you're making breads that you don't use too much flour. Um, what you want to do is you just kind of lightly, <laughs> lightly fluff your flour, and then spoon it into your cup, and then just scrape it off like that. That way you don't get extra flour um, in your in your baking. Anytime you're making um, cookies or whatever, it's really best to measure your flour that way. Of course, if you do it the same every time, if it's a recipe you're familiar with and you you always cook it that way, then go ahead and do it that way. But any of the recipes you make for me, that's the way I've measured my flour. So let's just check this and I, and I have a lot of tools in my kitchen that, that I'm very fortunate to have and one of them is my instant read thermometer so um, you don't have to be that exact if you don't if you don't want to if you don't um, have an instant read thermometer but I use mine quite a bit so I overcook this is a minute too long and so just stir it here, get that butter all melted. It's about 140 degrees right now. And you can't have it over, over 130 or else it will kill the yeast. So you're better off having it having it too cool and, and not too hot. So we just have to have it cool down just a little bit here before we add it to our to our mixer. That's looking good. All right, so I'm just going to dump in the, in the um, liquid ingredients. I've got this dough. I, I use a little bit of um, orange juice. This gives it a nice flavor as, as well as some um, orange zest and vanilla and an egg. So we're just going to add that right into our flour. So I'm going to do that. I'll be right back.
Okay, so just that quick, you can see that the dough has come together. I don't know, hope you can see that. Anyway, but it's kind of shaggy and and really sticky. Needs a lot more flour, but um, now's a good time to switch to the dough hook. So I'll do that. Oh, I forgot to add a teaspoon of the orange zest. I go ahead and add that in. Okay, so now you'll just want to slowly add your um, additional cup of, of, uh, of bread flour. You, you only want to use as much as you need. You use as little as possible. You want it a little bit sticky. Um, just so that the rolls are a little bit more tender. So I'll, I'll go ahead and add that. And that's going to have to knead for a little while. So I already made some dough earlier. And I already punched it down. So this is ready to shape. We're going to make some rosetta shapes, which are uh, really fun. Um, I, I, uh, I don't know if you can get a shot of these, baby. I made, made these rows earlier today. So this is the rosetta shape that we're going for. It's kind of a knot. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, good. Thanks, son. All right. They're really pretty. They're really pretty, Barbara. I I didn't hear that, Jennifer. What? Really I just said it was really pretty. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, they're really fun to eat. I I need to ice them later, but if we have if we have time, I'll show you how I do that too. So, all right. And I I told you I, I really like kitchen toys or gadgets, and and I like my scale for measuring out doughs. You can use it if you like, and if you don't, you know, that's fine too. But for me, it gives me more of an accurate um, division of the rolls. Helps me to, to shape them a little bit better. This dough is a little bit stickier than I would have liked. We'll just have to work with it. So it's, it's 22 ounces, and I need to divide that into thirds because I already used... Um, Already shaped some a little earlier, so that's about a third, and we'll just go with that. We'll put that back in the bowl, and you know, we'll just work with a third at a time. And out of this, you'll get three rolls. And then you want to be sure and cover your dough back up so it doesn't dry out. And I'm just going to go add more flour to the dough and make them. It's looking really good back there. So this is a little sticky, and it needs needs some flour. I'll just put a little bit of flour there. There we go. Okay. So I'll divide this into thirds again. We'll make three rolls out of it. Okay, and then you kind of want a smooth top. So if you pinch the bottoms together like that and stretch it, you get a nice smooth dough. You can see a little bit smoother. Helps you make a prettier roll that way. And we'll just do that for the, these three. I'll shape these three for you. Hopefully I won't forget about my dough that I have <laughs> there on the machine, which I forgot to add the sugar and salt to, which you may see me just do. <laughs> okay. Anyway, there's three nice little balls of dough. 
And then we're just going to make them into like snakes. So you can use it with your hand, you can roll them out like this. I like to knead and roll on my silk hat. Um, you could use your counter if you want to spy your counter, but I like that nothing sticks to the, the silk hat. Um, if they don't want to stretch for you, you can just let them rest for a second. So that's why I like to do three at a time so that they can kind of rest a little bit. And it helps if your surface isn't quite so floured. Helps if it's a little bit sticky. Helps helps you to roll them out in shape. So I'm going to let those rest for a sec while I check my dough. But you can see with the KitchenAid, you really, it's really not much work to make breads. You just let it go by itself. I should have set, set a timer for five minutes or so. But we'll just guess. So you're going to want these to be about 12 inches long, which is almost the length of my silk hat, which I, and is another reason I like to use the silk hat because it gives me a guide on how long these should be. And you see how if you let them rest, they just get easier and easier to work with. You can kind of see them shrink back a little bit. Thanks, Sandy. Does anybody else have any questions? I've kind of been going fast, but be sure and chat a question. And then I'll answer it. Um, the pie filling that I <laughs> the pie filling I actually made this time, I went to Orson Beauty, which is a local wholesale supply place, and um, and and bought some uh, uh, what is it, toppings, and then I just just stick them in like a little bit. But you can sure use hand pie filling. That's usually what I've done, but um, the last few years, Lucky Lee sent me some pie filling, and it it was um, it was so much better than the wilderness. Can I say that? So I didn't want to use that again this year. Uh, the yeast. Have you tried the yeast? It is good for doughs with more sugar in the mixing of yourself. That's actually I, I think you mean the platinum. Is that what you mean? Um, that's what I used in in these rolls, and I I think. Um, it is a lot more forgiving. It's a lot um, easier to work with. I know I've had better rise and I've had luck even just letting the doughs um, just rest and not even uh, rise to double. And then uh, just using them that way. So yeah, that's the Red Star Platinum yeast and, and I think it's great. You could probably even get away with not using the vital wheat gluten in the uh, in, in wheat breads if you're using the platinum yeast. Let the dough refrigerate overnight. No, I like to do uh, I like to do doughs and refrigerate them overnight. Um, generally I will get them to the part where they're shaped and ready to bake and then refrigerate them. Um, I've done that a lot with like monkey breads. Um, but I've not tried that with the platinum yeast and I Seems like I read that they don't really recommend it. So I'm just going to check on my dough. Okay, so we just needed just a little bit more flour and I think it's about ready. So let's get these shaped. Stretch them out here a little bit. Okay, so that's about the right length. Now what you want to do is you want to pick it up and just like you're going to tie a bow, if you're tying your shoe, you take it through, okay, and then this loose end just comes back in, goes up the hole, and then this end tucks over inside, and you just kind of pinch those ends together. And then there you have a pretty rosette. So I'll do that a couple more times and, and show you that. Thank you. 
It's five minutes on the red, okay. Yeah, it looks like it's tough. It really comes together easy, Karen. It's not hard at all. And, um, the nice thing with when you're working with breads is that they always look prettier after they've risen and, and baked. So if you don't get them perfect, they still look beautiful after they're baked. But this one kind of wants to go flat. Yeah, bread is really forgiving, Jennifer. That, that's the great thing about it. Um, people really shouldn't be intimidated about it because it always looks prettier. Okay, so I'll show you again. You take it, make a circle, just put your fingers there, make a circle, take your fingers out, and then this end kind of comes around and goes in through the hole, and this one comes over the top, and then you just pinch those together. And then you have a pretty, pretty rosette shape. All right, let's do this last one and then I'll take the dough out of the mixture and just show you the steps on that. So I don't know if this has sat a little too long or whatever, but it's not going to. Okay. All right, so now I'll do it laying down. Maybe that's easier for some to see. So you take that, pull it through, and this end goes around and under. And this end comes back over the top. So kind of just like you would a braid over under, and then you have a pretty, pretty row that shape. Okay, so now our, our dough has, has been beaten. We've got a pretty good gluten go on on there. I might have taken time to add a little more flour. But basically what you want in the KitchenAid is you want the sides to be pretty clear, but you want it moist enough so it's still is sticky on the bottom. So I don't know if you can see that, but that's pretty good. It's probably, you know, could use a little bit more flour, but I like to use less flour in the KitchenAid and then I'll put it on my silk hat with some flour and, and I'll knead in a little more flour if it needs it. So, and if you don't have a scraper, I love my scrapers. Really helps you get the dough out. I'll just scrape down your bowl. And I'll put a little flour in. All right, so it's really pretty dough. You can see the, the little bits of orange coming through, and it it smells wonderful. If you were here, you'd be just as happy as I am. <laughs> anyway, and it's really not too sticky. It's coming together really nice, so it's great. So I, I usually just knead it a little bit on my silk hat like that, form a nice shape, and then. I should probably get another bowl. Where is our other bowl? Okay, so I, I really like these, I guess we call them batter bowls, but they have markings on the side, which is nice because it helps you determine um, when your dough is doubled, when it's risen twice its size. and I I like cooking spray. I like the convenience, so I use it. But if you're a purist, you would want to get your butter out and and spread that. And Carrie Ann had a comment. Let's see. Pop me it's there to add more time. That that sounds like good advice, Carrie Ann. Okay. So then you want to put this in upside down, so it's kind of greased, and then just flip it over. So get some of that grease on top, and then you want to cover it with plastic wrap. And then it's going to have to rise for about 60 to 90 minutes, so I'll just set it over on the stove, by the way. 
Okay, so I showed you how to shape the rolls. So after the dough is risen, then you'll do that and shape all the rolls. I probably don't have time to, to make any more, but if you have questions on that, I guess I can answer those. And then I have some more that are risen. So, Do you mind if I ask a question out loud, Barbara? Sure, go ahead. Um, I had asked it in chat, but it kind of scrolled up. But I was wondering... Um, kolaches, what exactly, like what culture are they from, and are they mostly for Christmas, or are they for whenever, or? Yeah, um, kolaches are a Czech um, uh, pastry, and I don't know if they're just for Christmas. At my house, they're pretty much just for Christmas. I, I was at the orthodontist with my, I think my daughter, and I saw the, the recipe in a magazine. So I asked the receptionist if she'd give me a photocopy of it, <laughs> and so uh, I made them that year for Christmas uh, breakfast, and then they've been requested every year since. So, so um, they've kind of evolved in shapes. Um, the recipe in the magazine called for you to cut them into squares and then fold the corners in, so it was kind of like a little pouch. Mm -hmm. But I, um, I found you couldn't get as much filling in it that way, and I really like the filling. So this shape kind of allows you to get get more filling. I've also done a fun one that's been really popular on Pinterest. It's a candy cane braid, and, and you just roll out the whole dough in a square, and then you cut the ends. It's kind of a mock braid, and then you, you fold it in. Um, I filled it with an, an apple filling and added the, the Hershey's cinnamon uh, chips, yeah, and then did two different drizzles on it and shaped it like a candy cane. So I could put a link up for that. It's been really popular on Pinterest and it's delicious. But um, I kind of like this this uh, style because like I said, you get a little more filling in. And so let me show you how, how I do that. I actually um, I actually tap down the middle a little bit before I bake them. I don't know if you can see, these are the ones I just made, and these are the ones that uh, have been resting and are probably about ready to go in the oven. So I would just kind of tap gently in the middle to make more of a hole. Um, there's already sort of a natural hole there where you have, uh, you know, where your dough has met, but I like to make it a little bit bigger. And then I'll just grab the filling out of the bread. So this, uh, this filling is, is cherry, and it's kind of nice because um, they were crushed cherries, and so you get more cherries in every bite, <laughs> I guess you'd say. But just take a teaspoon and fill up that center. And don't ask me what I'm going to do with a whole bowl of cherry filling, but I'm sure I'll find some to do. <laughs> They thought uh, they thought at Giggies that I was probably doing cheesecake, and that sounds pretty good to me. So anyway, you just tap in your filling like that. Well, actually, you know, I should have egg washed these. It's easier if you egg wash them before you put the the jam in. But egg washing really is optional. My oven tends to brown things up pretty well without it, so I probably probably won't do that. Take a spoon to it. Oh, yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> you can't ever go wrong with the spoon. So basically, that's it. Um, you know, uh, I think it's easy, especially if you use your KitchenAid mixer to do all the kneading. I, I probably could use the mussels from leaving it on the counter, but, but for me, the KitchenAid. So. And ice cream topping. Yeah, that would be perfect. How long do they bake? Um, you bake them in a pretty hot oven. You bake them at 400, so only 10 to 15 minutes, depending on your oven. Um, these I only baked for 10 minutes. Um, do you want me to see me ice them? I could, I could do that. Yes. Okay. Well, let's whip some icing up right quick then. <laughs> All right, so 
Usually I make a simple icing. I just use powdered sugar and a little milk or water. If I'm feeling adventurous, I might add butter or, or uh, vanilla. But really there's, there's enough sweetness and flavor in these rolls. So generally I just do powdered sugar and water. So, and generally it's like a cup of powdered sugar and shipping them is a great idea. <laughs> what about the lemon juice? Yeah, lemon juice would be a great addition, Jennifer. That's great. My my family tends to like things pretty sweet, so everything around here gets a simple glaze. And then for a cup of water, you need about a, a tablespoon. I mean, a cup of powdered sugar. You need about a, a tablespoon of water. So. Just add that a whisk it in. A little more. I know yesterday when Jennifer did her uh, demonstration on profiteroles. She did one of my favorite techniques, which is just to use uh, a Ziploc bag. You just, um, if you have a lot of uh, filling to put in it, you can put it in a glass like she did, which really makes it nice and easy to fill. Um, you want this pretty thin so that it's going to drizzle over those rolls. Um, if you if you glaze them, you can glaze them when they're hot. You'll just want your glaze to be a little bit thicker. Um, this is pretty thin, which is probably probably a good consistency. Just try and get the lumps out. These are actually going in the freezer for Christmas morning, so I appreciate you coming and helping me make uh, kolaches for Christmas morning. Otherwise, I would ship them out. <laughs> All right, we'll use my daughter's favorite mug. How's that? You just Put the bag in it and put it down around the okay. That way you don't, it's like an extra set of hands if you Jennifer put it that way, which is nice. All right, and then when you're glazing these, you want to put something underneath them. Either that or send them on a piece of parchment or something because they're going to get, going to get a little messy. Okay, so just push that glaze down into one corner. And then you're going to want to trim off the tip. And just cut a little bit off the tip. You can always make it bigger, but you can't make it smaller. So just a little bit. Okay. And then you just drizzle. If you want, you can go the other direction. <laughs> and it's that easy. Those are done. So like I said, I, I'll usually uh, freeze them un, un, uh, unglaze and just get up in the morning and add glaze in the morning. You can freeze them with the glaze on, but you'll lose a lot of the, the glaze, so it's better not to do it. Oh, am I frozen? Am I frozen for everybody? No? Okay, good. <laughs> All right, well, that, that's it. Um, I hope I inspired you to uh, get in your kitchen and make some braids, have something uh, special for uh, Christmas morning. Any other questions? 
They look beautiful. Well, thanks, Jennifer. I, I, I think they taste as good as they look, too. <laughs> I'm sure that they do. Please yeah. hand one to each of us now. <laughs> <laughs> Would you prefer uh, blackberry or cherry? I would like one of each. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what's going to happen around here. Um, my daughter said, I know you're making three batches, which is three dozen, but that's only three apiece, Mom. <laughs> 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 so, all right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining me. Thank you, Barbara. Thanks, Barbara. Uh, well, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. So...